Hi, and welcome to another Aces Faces Business Cases. I've got Patrick with me today. Hi, Patrick. Hi there. <laughs> Thanks for taking time out of your day. Um, I'm just going to jump in and ask you what first attracted you to Aces. Yeah, um, it's a good question, really. I think um, before I joined, I, I sort of got to meet quite a lot of people uh, who were involved in it, who I, who I highly rated and regarded, enjoyed spending time with them. So that was the sort of first part of it. And I'll go to the Christmas drinks and all those sorts of things. Uh, as I got more and more involved and as my, my working relationships changed as well, my positions changed, um, and I was working a lot more internationally with other other companies. Um, so in many with a lot of ACIS members in, so companies in the US, in Benelux, India, Nigeria, seemed like everyone I spoke to was involved in ACIS. Uh, and I'm part of the Security Institute as well, but I really needed something a bit more, a bit more of a global community to, to be involved in. And I've, I've really, really enjoyed it. I love having those conversations, especially the international ones as well. Everyone looks at security in each, each sort of area in a slightly different way. And, you know, it's, it's fascinating to me to hear the different experiences, stories, solutions that, that you get from, from being a part of the international community. And then obviously in the UK for me, meeting up with friends and like-minded professionals is always a, a very nice thing, but also spending more time with people from other areas of security that I'm, I'm less familiar with. So things like man guarding and, and some of the really technical security solutions that, that are out there. Perfect. And, and so joining ASIS, I, I love this question only because everybody's quite similar. Um, and the global reach is really also, I mean, it just sings to, you know, not only being US centric, but the, the perspectives, uh, you know, very big on diversity as well and trying to grow and understand that so i think that's what the global piece brings to the uk centricity where our professionals and our experts and and, and our wider um community operate but also the connectedness we need uh, in today's Absolutely. world so perfect thank you so when it comes to aspirations for asis or yourself or the industry what is it what is it that you're after that's a small question, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> um, I suppose, if, yeah, if I break it down kind of bit by bit, I suppose personally for me, it's it's an opportunity to to learn. Um, you know, I did my CPP last year, which was which was great, and I there was lots of it that I knew, but also big areas of it that that I were, that I was weaker in or, or less familiar with. So that was a really nice opportunity for me to. You know, validate what I knew and, and learn things that I didn't. Um, and from that, I've kind of kicked on and, and done other courses, other, uh, you know, accreditations that are linked to what I felt like I didn't know as well. So things like ERM and, and cybersecurity and things. So I've done a lot of work around the bits that I felt I could, I could you know, bolster my knowledge from and my, my experience and understanding. So that was, that was a big part of it. Um, I suppose I'm a strong advocate for those that have taken my my route into the industry. Um, so I came from not academia, but I, you know I did my masters and then happened to fall into uh, physical security and crisis management. Um, but when I started out 10, 11 years ago, there weren't that many like me from from that background, um, especially those that were doing real physical security and working in some some complex environments and you know I was always trying to shake off the tag of oh you're an analyst you're an analyst but actually I'm not I really understand my physical security my you know risk methodology all those sorts of things um so ever since and, and the industry has changed dramatically in those 10 years so um you know it's, it's less of what I perceive as an issue but I'm still a really big advocate of trying to get people coming from university or those who are in analyst roles that actually want to do something a bit more strategic or a bit more uh, taxable um, to, to really sort of grow that and, and push forward with it because certainly as I say in the last few years those that I've worked with it's much more diverse in terms of you know uh, men and, and, and ladies and also just the backgrounds we have it's, it's so much more of an even split and that in itself is very very important for progression and 
different ways of looking at things and you know some really bright and unique ideas um from having that community so you know that's that was a big aspiration for the security industry and i feel like we're ticking those boxes but there's always more we can do and you know that's why i like being involved in asis and i can see in the community in asis that you know it is a lot more diverse and in, in every sense of the word of diverse of diversity so um you know that's that's a big bonus but also having asis security is always adapting um it has to because of all you know threats are always evolving so we have to keep up with it and i think being involved in a in a large international community knowledge network that you know you can get ahead of understanding where the trends are coming from the new emerging risks that we're seeing but you know as equally important the solutions and you know ways of managing those around the world that's that's really really important to me and i you know i I'm a consultant, I have been for 10 years. So if I don't know what's coming or how to potentially fix it, then I'm not gonna be very good at my job. So, you know, it's really important for me to keep my ears to the ground and, and learn from others and be humble and understand when someone knows more than me and can can teach me, that's that's really important. So, um, and you know, similarly for me, it's what I know, what I specialize in, you know, we're always, humble ourselves and things i don't think it's much but to some others it might be uh you know asis creates a really good formal and informal platform um for me to share my own experiences and, and knowledge of best practice so it's um yeah it's a, it's a community that works for me in that sense um, definitely perfect and you know exactly why you're here today right you know it's just embracing all those things and you talk about the diversity in the background i hear you because that that's sort of my background i fell into security <laughs> you know and and very much like you that's where my passion sits trying to help those people from those backgrounds because i have been fortunate where i've built a team up from scratch and i purposely picked pockets um, but we're not always lucky like that. So like you say, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel most of the time. Somebody's been there before, been really similar. So being able to connect and that speed and that agility is really what can set us apart. So, so, so nice to hear that from you. Um, final question and, and the last one to wrap it up for today. What's the one area of security you'd like to hear more from in our ACES programs? Uh, I, th I think we've got a good spread. Um, you know, and I like you, I'm a part of some of the people that think about what, what we can include as content and, and those involved. I mean, for me, the business of security is something that I think we, we could maybe do a bit more from. So in, in that sense, I don't, um, you know, I don't mean the consultancy side, but very much how security works alongside other disciplines, particularly within the Unilevers of, of the world. Um, you know, and yes, things like ERM and uh, actually the concept of ESRM and how we we sort of drum home that and try and educate people on it is a little bit concerning for me because that should be bread and butter of security. It should be strate strategic as well as tactical. It should be communicating, coordinating with other risk functions within organisations. It should be talking to marketing and sales and strategy and all those key bits that um and certainly again as a consultant that's when it works that's when really successful security teams are there and working as a, as a very comprehensive and, and quality risk function so um you know when i say hear more about the business of security we often hear it from our side but it might be interesting to hear from general counsel in unilever about what does the security team there mean for them or you know, a business development VP for, you know, big oil major, something like that. And these are all people that I've, I've worked with. I've been fortunate enough to, to work on some of those strategic things and help in their decision making and, and understand, you know, it's not just about protecting the front door, but it's about, okay, do we want to invest in Afghanistan right now or even you know, a few months ago? You know, are we going to upscale, downscale our operations? Do we want to build our headquarters? in this way because of the, the terror threat or the general security threats in X country, you know, all these sorts of things that have really important um, 
decisions, you know, cost decisions, but also operational logistical decisions. Um, and that for me is the really interesting part of security. And, and we're very good at telling our story of it, but perhaps, you know, others who work closely with security, you know, even comms, all of those different components, it might be quite interesting to hear their take. And I know from each business, it's very different, but um, that again is a, is a really interesting story to tell. So um, yeah, I think, I think that's the way that I would like to see a little bit more of. Um, so yeah. Cool, so I'll let you into a secret. I'm having to bite my tongue because I could feel a panel conversation coming on there. Um, so I think, um, as you'll hear me say regularly, this association for me at the moment is for members by members. So because I was biting my tongue, I think I'm going to pass the baton to you and say, let's put something on. Let's you and me work on something around that, because I think if you're wanting it, there's bound to be others that would love to hear this too. So I'm going to pass yeah. the mantle to you and say, get involved <laughs> and let's get that sorted. All right. Okay. Um, so <laughs> Patrick, absolutely a pleasure. Thank you so much for taking the time out to, you know, tell us your story and tell us what you want to hear from us. And more importantly, let's uh, look forward to hearing some output as well from this one. Brilliant. Look forward Perfect. to it. Perfect. That's you. amazing. Thanks so much, Patrick. That's okay. Cheers now. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah, you too. Bye.